Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. Today I'm tying a little damselfly pattern using bucktail to make an extended body. I'm using a wide gape size 12 hook, and my thread is UTC 70 in black. For the tail, I'm using some blue dyed bucktail, this is royal blue. And I'm going to use two body hackles for this fly. One is this dyed blue Indian cock cape, and the other is grizzly. I like the combination of the two, but you can use either on their own as well. For the wings, I'm using the tips of some blue dun hackle, and I'm going to need a thin strip of black foam to make the thorax cover. I've put eyes on this fly. These are some pre-made ones from Venyard, but you can also use burnt monofilament. And I'm going to need some varnish when I'm making the tail. And this is a handy one because it's got a needle applicator built in. This is a normal sewing needle. Well, it's actually an upholsterer's needle, so it's got a nice blunt tip. You can use a tube fly needle, but this works absolutely fine. I'm lightly waxing it, and this helps lubricate it so we can get the, get the tail off later. And I'm leaving a long tag on my thread here. I'm going to make a few turns to secure it down and park it out of the way on my materials clip. Now I've taken a bunch of bucktail, and I'm going to tie it in by the tip end first. I've, I've lined them up as best I can and snipped off any long stragglers. And I'm going to make a few loose turns here, and then a few tighter ones as I work down. And then I'm just going to gently massage the hair between my fingers to spread it around the entirety of the needle. Now, splitting it roughly in half, I'm going to bend it back on itself, and this is going to be the very tip of the tail. I'm not pulling too hard here because I don't want to disturb it from where I've tied it down, but now I'm making a few nice tight wraps with the thread. I'm going to add a little dab of varnish, and that's just going to hold everything together. It helps to spin your thread flat whilst you're doing this, because that gives you a nice wide black band like on the naturals. Now you can just cross them over here, cross the thread over, but what you can also do, like I'm doing here, is to try and hide it a little bit, and that just removes some of the diagonal thread that you'd get going to the next band. Although I'm not too particular about it, I don't think that the fish really mind. Either way, we're going to continue and repeat the process all the way up, putting a little dab of varnish on each time, and this is just going to help stiffen up the tail a little bit in the long run as well. So I've cut out the rest because it's just the same thing over and over again. But I've aimed to make about five or six bands working up the tail. Now I'm going to come in with my whip finisher. Mine's actually almost too small for doing this, but uh, we, we make it work in the end. And just going to do a couple of turns to finish and trim off again, leaving a long tag. And I'll put a little dab of varnish on this last knot as well. And you can see that's made a nice cylindrical tail with some quite pronounced black barring. Now with a little bit of wiggling and a little bit of pressure, we can slide that off the needle. I've switched out the needle for my hook now. I'm going to tie in my thread just behind the hook eye, make a few tight turns to secure, and trim off the excess. I'm going to add the eyes in first, and I like to tie this type of eye in longitudinally down the hook shank and then tighten down, because that seems to switch it automatically to sitting in the right position. Now I'm going to make some figure eight wraps around the, around the eyes here, and the first few they will have, want to slip a little bit, but I'm making some wraps in front and behind and then crossways over just to secure everything down nice and tightly. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to run my thread back down to the base of the tail. I'm using a short shanked wide gape hook here, I think that's about the best proportions for it. And to secure the eyes down a little bit further, I'm just adding a little dab of varnish in the middle. Here's the tail we made earlier. Well, this is a different one, actually. I've tied a small batch of these today. And I'm going to make a few really nice tight wraps down at the back of the fly to secure it down. And you want to make sure that you're catching in those two long bits of thread that we left over. That's what holds the whole tail together. Now I'm going to keep working towards the head of the fly. And I'm just using this to build up a little bit of bulk. And I'm going to trim it off so it sits neatly behind the eyes. Taking my thread back, and we're just going to secure everything down. And this makes a really solid body, a really nice firm underbody that we can wrap our hackles over later. The next material is going to be my thorax cover, which is a thin strip of foam. And I've trimmed it down at the edges a little bit. This is 2mm foam, but even that's a little bit thick for my liking for this pattern. Hook came loose in the vise there, so I'm just repositioning a little. I just need to go a little bit further, and I'm going to use this foam later on to make the thorax cover and the head of the fly. You'll notice that I've tied the eyes on slightly back from the hook shank, and that means that I can 
properly secure down the foam at the head later. I'm running my thread back down towards the base now, and we're going to tie in our hackles. I've prepared two, a grizzly and a blue. Like I said, you can use either on their own, but I think that the combination of both makes for a very nice effect. I've stripped a little bit of the barbs from the stem of each feather, and I'm just using that stem as a little handle to tie them both down, using a cross wrap technique, and then securing down the excess. Now we can wrap our hackles, and these feathers are long enough that I can do both together, and it just helps to make a nice spiral wrap working upwards. You can see how the grizzly and the blue are blending together, and it makes a really nice effect representing the legs of the insect, and helps the fly float as well. The hair has a little bit of buoyancy of its own, and of course the foam will float, and then the, the, outstretch, the outstretched wings will sit nicely in the surface film. So this is a fly that you can fish dry or damp. Now you don't get the chance to fish damselflies very often, but when they are out and when the trout are feeding on them, there's really no substitute, and if you've not got a pattern in your box like this, you can be really quite stuffed. So that's my hackles done, I've secured them down. And now here's the wings. I've taken the hackle tips from two blue dun feathers and I've stripped them down so we've just got a little wing shaped tip left. I'm tying these in diagonally across the head. You can see that I'm aiming to put them diagonally between the eyes, then one on one side and then one on the other, and this puts them in a nice natural angle towards the tail of the fly. Now those stems on their own, if I cut them there, wouldn't be very secure. So I'm going to run them over the eyes and tie them off nice and tight just behind the eye of the hook. Then I can come in with my scissors and snip away the excess stem. Try and get it really nice and close here so it doesn't intrude on the hook eye. I'm going to take my thread back behind the eyes because I'm going to tie down this foam in two places. I'm spreading the hackle out a little bit and then here I'm putting a loop behind the eyes trying to keep the foam nice and central on top and this is going to represent the thorax of the fly. And then pulling the foam quite tightly, I'm going to make another few tight thread wraps just behind the hook eye, and this forms the top of the head. Now I'm going to come in with my whip finisher and secure everything off behind the hook eye. This is why it's important to leave plenty of space when you're tying the eyes in. Don't put them right behind the hook eye, otherwise you won't be able to do this bit. And with everything secure, I can trim off my thread and then pulling the foam nice and tight, I can trim it off just over the eyes. And there's the finished fly. Like I said, it's an easy enough pattern to tie once you get the hang of the body, and the same technique works well for extended mayfly bodies using elk hair. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a fun pattern to tie, so give it a go. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.